here, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Coming to this week's web fishing video forecast. I'm at River's End Tackle in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. I stopped by today to pick up some snapper poppers. Gonna have it this evening with my son. Word is that there's been some good snapper action in the Lower Connecticut River, the DEP dock in Old Line, the Causeway in Old Saybrook, pretty much anywhere along the Lower River, as well as basically all the other coves and marinas along the coast really starting to produce some snapper blues now. So it's time to get out and get in on them. So here we go, moving on into the report, starting off in Connecticut. We'll begin with a traveling angler report of sorts, as Eli Braverman of Connecticut was fishing Seneca Lake, New York with his dad this week. Within moments of setting out the trolling spread, with both father and son were tight to a hefty laker. <clears throat> when the fish was eventually brought boat side, it was discovered that he had taken both lures. Now I've had two fish take the same lure before, never one fish taking two lures, so that's quite the story. I also got word from Captain Greg to pool the Blackhawk, and he said the blue fishing in the race is finally getting going. But now that the trips over to Montauk are, are, are still going pretty strong as well, and they're getting sea bass, scub, and fluke. And a couple of those trips have really been absolutely epic, as they put it. They're sailing Tuesday and Wednesday for bottom fish and bass and bluefish on the other days of the week. You can always check out their website for announcements of any special trips and schedule updates. Also got word of some excellent fluke fishing still going on at Saturday Long Island Sound. And Andrew at Fishing Factory 3 in Middletown weighed in a nice 9 pound uh, fluke this week. A whole squid fishing the deeper pockets of the sound seem to be producing the best results right now. But if you can catch some, some of those snapper blues that I mentioned earlier, keep them alive for a run of deep water, I can all but guarantee that you're going to be rewarded with a nice doormat. And over in Rhode Island, Rodman at Quanty Bait and Tackle has been hearing of some very good fishing off the South County beaches from roughly, let's say, Charleston on over to Quanty. And uh, Connor Howard stopped by the shop this week with both a seven pound fluke and a four pound black sea bass that he landed there this week. Big surf that kicked up Tuesday and Wednesday will make things a bit dirty. Hopefully it'll clear right up and fishing should be good, good going into this weekend. Also got word that the big bass bite over at Block Island continues. I received a picture of a 52 pound striper that Joshua Raboy landed over there on a live eel this week. While I haven't heard of quite as many big fish being landed since the recent moon, there's still some large fish to be had. As always, Southwest Ledge has seen a majority of the fishing pressure, but the south side of the island is also producing some big fish too. And for those willing to take a steam out past Block Island, fishing in the canyons has been pretty good with some albacore and big eye tuna and Atlantis and the tails. And I also received a picture of a nice mako landed by uh, Justin Jacobson while he was fishing with Captain Tom Logan this week. And up in Massachusetts, got word from Christian at Falmouth Bait and Tackle in Cape Cod, said there was a small fire in the shop this week. Now fortunately, no one was injured, and the shop will remain closed for a short time. They will be back up and running as soon as possible, as no major damage was done structurally. Uh, we, wish, we wish the entire shop a speedy cleanup, and we'll pass along word as soon as they're back in action. On the fishing side of things, Captain John of Fish Chatham Charters continued to hammer away at nice bluefin tuna out east. On one trip this week, he went four for four, and most outings are resulting in several hookups and at least one fish being boated. They even landed a good sized mako on one trip after it ate the tail off a of blue, uh, bluefin tuna that was boat side, and then on Monday, he came to the aid of a 20 foot center console that had taken on water and overturned. Fortunately, both anglers on board were pulled from the water and reported to be in good condition. So there you have it. That's this week's fishing forecast for New England. I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine, wishing you tight lines on the water. Receive the latest fishing reports, subscribe to the Fisherman's YouTube page. Click subscribe, then click the settings button and check send me updates. You'll now receive notifications of the latest Fisherman YouTube videos and reports. If you're already a subscriber, make sure you've checked send me updates in the settings so you receive the latest notifications.